Well, uh, in my endeavor to um, uh, keep explaining that how these transits affect us and how these transits have a different connotation when they are in different houses. I have explained initially about Saturn and uh, I've explained about Jupiter and now this time I'm going to explain to you all about Mars. How Mars when it is tra uh, transiting through the various 12 houses, what impact it has. And um, uh, if you've been following my series, you would uh, definitely know that all these houses are divided into four energies, that is the fire, the earth, the water and the air energy. So similarly, when these planets are going through these various houses, they do tend to adopt the energies of that particular house. So Mars, which is actually known as a very fiery planet, it's a very aggressive planet. It's a planet that which wins wars. It is known as a warrior planet. It can be used constructively and it can be used destructively depending upon the persons or the individual's persona. But at the same time, since our body is also made out of these four elements, that is water, air, earth and fire, these elements tend to have or build the attitude within us. So when these planets come into a particular sign and coordinate with the elements of our body, we can use it constructively or destructively. And now when Yola is seeing your chart, you have to see where your Mars planet is uh, placed. Uh, more often than not, Mars and Venus is in and around your sun sign. So you could probably see, look into your chart and see which sign your uh, planet is placed in the natal chart. So how your attitude is developed during that time. And then what is the transit showing because the transits are always different. And then accordingly analyze it. But uh, this is for your general explanation. You can't completely tune it into your life. So you must understand that when the planets are transiting the various houses, what do they demand of us? See, it's never a question of predictions. It's always like I maintain the fact that life is what you make it. So you have to learn how to create your own prophecies by understanding what the planets are demanding of us and how we are supposed to act in a particular way when a particular planet is in a particular house. Mars transiting the eighth house that is Scorpio which is a water sign. Now after all the seriousness of the previous signs, we come to this water sign where sexuality and intimacy are stimulated under this transit. Negative expression of this energy is the tendencies towards ego conflicts concerning jointly held property or money. See, when we, when we talk about sexuality and intimacy, it basically means passions. Now passions either in the arena of money or passions in the arena of honey. Both are very, very crucial and your energy levels are going to be very, very high. So don't get into power struggles. Don't get into ego conflicts. And it is very important for you to enjoy these passions in a much harmonious way. Even if there are conflicts, even if you have to sort matters out, again, my advice is sort the matters out, address the matters when Mars is forward moving and contemplate and do introspect on, the ma um, on these matters when the Mars is pausing or it is retrograde. Okay, now occasionally this transit could bring a crisis or ending of some kind. Whenever Mars is transiting an 8th house, it basically means the end of a particular thing and emerging of something new. So you may feel as if things are slipping out of your hand, whether it's money, whether it's relationships, whether you just need to give a thought that if that relationship or that money is very, very important to you, but it is slipping out, you have to question yourself, why? Is it because of the ego conflicts that have happened? Or is it because you have overindulged in a particular thing? These are the things that you need to question. Instead of getting disturbed deeply, you need to be forthright, honest and confront the issues. 
So you are likely to be strategic in your action. So if you are forthright and if you are honest and if you confront these issues, you will realize that you will become more strategic in your um, actions. And whenever you are disciplined and whenever you strategize your plans, they are bound to have good results and bound to be successful. So as you become aware of the subtleties of human interaction, your success will progress even further. So this is the time when your best course of action uh, is to recognize that you need to rely on others and you cannot live alone. It is important to know that it is a support system in the entire universe. We are a support to each other. Humans are a support to each other. You cannot live alone and say, okay, I'll be my own master. I will do my own thing and I don't need anyone. So Mars transiting in the 8th house and that into water sign teaches us adaptability not only to situations but to people. So when it is retrograde and it is pause, it gives us time to think who are the people who are important in my life or who are the people whom I need in my life or who are the people whom I can actually um, cut off from my life. It's basically in a nutshell I would say Retrograde helps us to discriminate and the forward helps us to sort the issues out amicably. So Mars in the eighth sign, uh, in the eighth house, in a water sign teaches us all about adaptability and also makes us realize that we are not uh, or we are a race that cannot live without support. Support system in every relationship is important. The transit of Mars takes 23 months to travel in all the zodiac signs. Basically when you will look into your own chart you will realize where the um, uh, transit is because the almanac does gives us the, all the dates. But just to give a clue to my clients you must uh, know that from January to March 9th Mars is transiting Aries and from March 10th onwards it's transiting Taurus. So probably then further on if you want to know how it is, you can divide these 23 months and you will realize where the uh, Mars is transiting.